We are presented with different smells and odors everywhere we go. But there aren't many people who are aware of how these affect our lives. Johan Lundström studies the olfactory sense and his discoveries show that smells and odors can tell more about us than we think. In the future, what we hope will happen is that we can use this knowledge that each individual have a unique body odor to create some kind of form of identification system. So rather than giving a fingerprint or, or retina scan, we can actually just deposit our body odors. In the future, you might be taking an infant scented nasal spray as a medicine for depression. An odor consists of odor molecules. When we detect a smell, it is these molecules which traveled into the nose and onto a receptor, which acts as a kind of chemical detector. The receptors convert the smell into an electrical signal that is sent to an area called the olfactory bulb. We have two olfactory bulbs which are a part of the brain and are found diagonally above our eyes, looking very much like a Q-tip or cotton swab. The brain then uses different pieces of the information to create a coherent picture of how we perceive the world around us. What is so special about the sense of smell, in comparison with other senses, is that it has been largely unexplored. Yuan wants to study how our senses work together. What would a cup of coffee be, after all, without smelling like coffee? So new research have uh, demonstrated that we are actually much better in uh, smelling odors that, than we previously we're aware of. So we are actually better in smelling odors than most animals out there, with the exception of maybe the dog. Oh, that's it. This is Oscar, Yuan's dog. But it was another dog that led to Yuan's interest in odor research, a German shepherd named Ella. Yuan was studying psychology and had developed an interest in behavior and learning. He got Ella as a puppy to study these processes. But when he noticed how skilled Ella was at extracting information from odors, it triggered his interest in learning how the olfactory system functions. He was surprised to find that there was very little written about this subject. I started studying uh, olfactory information uh, for my bachelor degree. And I was focusing at that time on social information. In other words, what information are transmitted between individuals of the same species. And then from there, I went into research and I focused more on uh, common or uh, general olfaction and how the brain can extract information. And then from there, I kind of progressed towards how the sense of smell interacts with our other senses, so multisensory integration. In 2003, Yuan moved to the U.S. to further his olfactory research. And what happened to Ella? Well, she went on to become a police dog in Stockholm. For about a year now, Yuan has been back in Sweden. Now at the Karolinska Institute in Stockholm, he continues his research in the field of multisensory neuroscience and odor perception. He is studying what happens to us when our senses interact with each other. So in this hallway we have a lab, so here we have a behavior lab, and over here we have the new imaging laboratories with EG, and here we have our chemicals. So where we do the mixing and we are building our apparatus. And specifically here we have our smell library, where we have uh, a long range of odors. We have food odors, we have pleasant odors, and also have unpleasant odors. Yuan's team consists of experts in many fields. The researchers use different measuring instruments to understand what happens in the brain when we use our senses. What motivates me in my research is trying to understand how the biology affects psychology, but even more importantly, how psychology affects biology. And the way to do this is to investigate the brain. The research's focus is on the sense of smell, but since smells are rarely experienced in isolation, it also extends to how sight and hearing affect us when combined with smell perception. For example, when eating, 90% of all the flavors we experience is attributed to smell. Without the sense of smell, one cannot tell the difference between an apple or a pear. The impression we get also depends on how it sounds when we chew and how it looks. 
If we change the visual experience, it will also change the way we think the food smells and tastes. So if we want to understand how the olfactory sense functions, we have to also study how all the senses are interacting with each other. The studies Yuan and his team are conducting expose individuals to smells as well as visual and auditory stimulus. When all of the information is processed, it creates a general picture of where in the brain the different impressions are processed and how. So far, this research has been able to show that by smelling other individuals, we can determine if they are related to us. We can roughly determine their age and whether or not they are sick. Scientists also know that it is possible to improve our olfactory sensitivity for a specific odor by up to 60%. We are now starting to understand how the brain are integrating three of our senses, sense of uh, smell, sense of vision, and sense of audition. Right? And we are now going from those three senses, trying to add more senses. So now we're adding taste to this, and we will also add a sense of touch. And what we hope in a few years to have a more real life experience. So we can actually measure what's happening in the brain when all our senses are activating. Yuan and his research team are trying to map out our senses. This basic research will play an important role in the future. And even today, they have discovered several interesting possibilities. Research has shown, for example, that when individuals in an MRI scanner are introduced to the scent of a newborn baby, they become calmer and more harmonious. If scientists find what molecules cause this, we might in the future be prescribed a nasal spray with an infant's odor as a treatment for depression. Additionally, it is possible that we will be able to odor scan for infectious diseases such as Ebola in airports, as researchers now know that most diseases have their own scent. What's really fascinating with the sense of smell is that almost nothing has been done uh, because the research has been lagging behind the other senses for many, many, many years. So almost anything that we are now touching hasn't been touched before.